Welcome everybody to BNI Talks. Today we've got our returning presenter, Zoe Garbushian of um, Boldness Ablaze Coaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has uh, been on with us a few times and we always get the biggest crowds for her because I think she has uh, figured out uh, the best way to present something, a concept for members that they, they have always wanted to talk about and maybe never have before. And this one certainly um, fits the bill. So this is all about uh, confidence. And we're talking about that today and the misconceptions of it as well with the title of this. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Zovic right now. Remember, before we get into it, you, you probably have a bunch of questions. So put them in the Q and A section as questions, but stay in the chat with any comments or any responses that we have. All right, Zovic, take it away. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much, everyone who's joined and put their cities um, in the chat. If you're still joining, tell us where you're where you're hopping where you're hopping on from. So I am Zovic Garbushin. I am in the East Side Connection chapter um, in Bellevue, Washington, so just outside of Seattle. Um, I am the CEO of Boldness of Blaze Coaching, and I am here to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is confidence. Um, it is one of the most common things that comes up with my clients. And as Steve said, no matter how successful they are, there is always something that comes up around confidence. So first, first thing I want to do is ask this very provocative question. Who here, just put into the chat, who here is 100% confident all the time in all things in all ways? I want to see it in the chat. Heck no. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of not me's, no yeah. numbers, not me's, a little short, a little short. I like that, Bruce, a little short. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually or perceptually? Oh, they, someone went, someone went up with that one. I love that. Yes. Oh. Seriously. I'm serious. Okay. Solid. No. Great. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and I was going to say, if there was somebody, then send private message me your information because I need to get coaching from you. Yeah. So, <laughs> for, the, for the rest of you, um, we're going to go on a little. Good at faking it. So that's yeah, fine. good at faking it. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to mention that to you, that fake it till you make it. Um, but for the rest of us, normal people, earthlings, um, we're going to go on a journey today about confidence. So what I want to do today, I'm going to share my screen. Hold, please. Here we are. Okay. Steve, give me a heck yes if you see my screen. Heck yes. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. So, so we're going to talk today about confidence, what it's about, how it shows up for us, why we can't get it, why we feel like we can't get it, and kind of break this down a little bit. Um, okay, so before I begin, there, there are many things that likely get in the way of cost and confidence. We're going to talk about some misconceptions today. Um, but one more question for you in the chat. Can you all put into the chat what you define, how you define confidence? Like just a few words of how you define confidence. Because I have a definition, Steve, maybe while they're chatting and yeah. giving their answers about how they define it, how would you define it? Self-assurance, uh, yeah, go I ahead. Think, I think it's kind of a, 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 a comfort zone of, of, have, of being uh, prepared, maybe. You know, like I'm most confident when I've done research and I'm ready to present something. And if I feel unprepared, or uh, maybe I have some doubts about my qualifications, that's what always kind of holds me back. Yeah. Um, and and even though I think a lot of times that's, you know, brought on by you know my, my inner, my inner uh, speech, you know, uh, yes. I think what what I need to do uh, is, is look at it from hey, you know what I know what I'm talking about. I've earned the right to be here, and so therefore I should be able to express myself. But. Okay. You know, curveballs come and, you know, you, you always, there's always self-doubt. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I love that you self-coach yourself. We've got mm. some awesome, thank you for that. We've got awesome answers, self-esteem, being comfortable in your own skin. Um, mm. Steve, you were speaking Rhonda's brain, she said, um, right. not stumbling over my words, thinking that I know what I'm doing and where I'm going, acknowledgement that I am enough, believing mm. in myself first, being sure of the things you say and do, not second guessing myself. So many, so many good answers. Um, so I want to, I want to define this for us just to level set it's confidence is a feeling. And that's what a lot of, um, you in the yeah. chat have kind of described and it comes from action. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm defining this for us today. It's a feeling that comes from action. You know, when you're feeling it, 
you know when you're not. And mm. it's a feeling that can work from the outside in if we take action. Sometimes we show up to the game confident when our personality gels with the task at hand, but for those non-gelling moments, we can go and do something that helps us build competency, which helps us make up, which helps make us feel confident. So it works from the outside in and the inside out, which tells me that it's a mindset and it's a choice. Mm. If I told you, Steve, that you could wake up tomorrow and be confident all the time, would you believe me? I would not. Okay. I expected that answer. <laughs> I and want I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna, I definitely want to. <laughs> I'm going to challenge that a little bit um, because I actually think that that is possible. Okay. Um, so what gets in the way? Well, this aside from this elephant, it's we have to get the mind junk out of the way. There are probably a mm. lot of things that get in our way. We're all unique. We have our own beliefs and attitudes about ourselves and about the world and our work environments and our businesses and our customers but we're gonna break down some misconceptions to help you get a breakthrough about how you relate to the idea of confidence. So are we ready? Everybody, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a yes. Um, okay, so the first misconception I wanna get at here is you either have it or you don't. I don't know about you, but I've definitely looked around in my life at certain times and said, well, there she's just confident. She just, I could never do that. That's just who she is. That's just not me. And I'm sure that there are many people that think like, I just don't have that. It's just never, it's never going to be me because we have this belief that confidence, confidence has been, it's a gift that's been bestowed upon some mm -hmm. and not on others. And that if you don't have it, you'll never be able to get it. Um, mm -hmm. And in the chat, someone said imposter syndrome totally gets in the way. Yeah. So the belief is that you either have it or you don't, but actually I'm going to challenge that. I'm going to say co confidence is cultivated and accumulated, accumulated. I will say that some folks are born with natural talent for things. We all have our own natural talents that allows us to put ourselves out there in ways that other people might not. And yes, I want to acknowledge that we've all had different experiences in our lives. We grew up differently with different values, different family experiences, and all of those things impact our self-esteem. But if you think about confidence as a mindset and you think about it as something that you can choose, then anybody can cultivate and, and accumulate confidence through practice, through rehearsing, through experimentation, repetition, even putting outside systems into place. I mean, Steve, you said knowledge is um, preparing is one of the biggest ways we can feel confident, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I think I read a story about Chris Rock who, you know, Oscars notwithstanding, what he did say was before his last tour, he went and played in like 40 or 50 small clubs to get his jokes right, which means there was a lot of failure in yeah. his standup before he gets on, on the stage and does the show that looks flawless and easeful and confident, he's failing left and right in his jokes. So some of, I'll give you an example around this. Um, some of us are extroverts. I consider myself to be an extrovert sometimes. I'm also an introvert. And being in front of people like this or meeting new people might seem easy um, for me. It's not necessarily because I was born confident. I was born with a personality that derives energy from being with people. And so I like doing it, which means I do it more, which means I cultivate that ability mm -hmm. and I accumulate that ability. When, I, when you get good energy from something, when you enjoy something, you're gonna do it more. You're naturally going to get better at it. If you're an introvert, you gotta work a little harder at things like being in meetings and networking or dating and friendships. Um, there is a, there's a quote, I don't know if any of you have ever heard this, but the quote is from Malcolm Gladwell. It takes 10,000 hours of intensive practice to achieve mastery of complex skills and materials. Okay, is that true? I don't know if that's scientifically proven. I'm not confident that that's right. And that's mm -hmm. a TV dad joke and you're welcome to that. But mm -hmm, yeah. the point is that we need to be in something and doing something to build the confidence around it. We can't think about it. We can't talk about it. We can't complain about it. We can't lament that we don't have it. We have to do it. And because doing is that foundational level of confidence, um, when we're in action, we are learning. And mm -hmm. when we witness ourselves moving through something difficult, we generate our confidence from the outside in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And you can think about the, you can think about confidence like a brick wall. Every time you do something big or small that you put yourself out there or you take action or you try something you're not sure of, you're adding another brick to that wall. And a brick wall is a solid foundation that 
very rarely can be shaken, right? It takes quite a bit to knock it down. So it is cumulative. You don't, it's not that you don't have it or you don't, you can build it, cumulative and cultivated. The second misconception, it can only exist in the absence of fear. Put a hell yes or a hell no in the chat. How many of you have said, oh yeah, you can't be scared if you're gonna be confident. You cannot be scared, they cannot coexist. Yeah, yeah, we, so we got some yeses, we got some no's. Okay, all right. Um, I believe in my opinion here on this one is that in reality, cap, confidence happens when you have fear and you take action anyway. It's, mm -hmm. it's when you, confidence is in, built in the face of fear. When you have built your confidence, it is hard won. It is worth something when you did it because you were when, when you were afraid. It means a lot and you gained a lot from taking that risk. Those fears that keep us stagnant are usually some version of failure. Um, I don't know about you, Steve, but like the, uh, you know, I'm not going to be liked. I'm not going to do a good job. My work isn't going to be appreciated. I don't know. I've never done this before. Have you ever experienced those? Yeah, sure. I mean, every time you, you try something new, and I think I'm um, looking at this graphic here, uh, yeah. it's interesting to me because I, I think of confidence typically as like, well, I'm. Uh, I feel good about what I'm doing. I feel comfortable in a room. I feel comfortable training people or something like that. But when I'm looking at this now with this, the, the fear part uh, mm -hmm. says to me um, that the best times to show your confidence is when you're trying something new or something mm -hmm. that's challenging. Yeah, that, that's, you know, I think the that's where you kind of bring it out from inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the hard won confidence right there. When you're trying something new, when you're not quite sure, um, when you think you can do it, or actually when you're just scared to death. Yeah. <laughs> but you've said yes, and you're going to take it on. Right. Um, that's, and I'm just going to read a few. So we've got some awesome um, comments in the chat. So you have to overcome the fear and not let fear dictate your life. That's wonderful, Ivan, because um, fear can actually run the show a lot more than we realize. And yeah. so being aware of it as, as much as possible will um, keep you playing big instead of keep you playing small. Um, and I love this one. Sarah said, fear and excitement are physiologically the same. I love that, she, that Sarah said that because from the neck down, your body actually doesn't recognize one from the other. There's a very fine line between fear and excitement. To us, fear and excitement mean two different things. To the body, they're the exact same response. Mm -hmm. And so if you're feeling fear, maybe there's a way for you to tell yourself, actually, I could just be really excited. Could be the same thing. You know, we, we did need to do a little bit of mind tweak to ourselves sometimes. Um, and uh, let's see, I, um, I'm scared a lot, but I do it anyway. You can be confidently crapping your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Yes. <laughs> hey, she's speaking the truth there. Um, yeah. So the fear that keeps us stagnant is usually, like I said, some version of failing or not being seen enough. And all that sabotaging thinking, 99% of those things never happen. So the best way to get out of fear and is and that overthinking experience is by taking action and thrusting yourself into something before you have the time to think about it for too long. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've said the words, I need to do this right now before I change my mind. Let me just go do this right now <laughs> before yeah. I have too much time to yeah. think about it. That I see as my instinct telling me, you can actually handle this. Right. Um, and if I give myself the chance um, to get reasonable or rational, ra reasonable or rational, I will absolutely lose my nerve or find some sort of very logical explanation as to why I should not do it. And that's what I love about really smart people like us and business owners out, you know, out there in the world. We can find reasons and rationale to not do something every day. <laughs> You know, funny, I find I find that a lot of times I'll do something that I wouldn't normally do mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, uh, bring out my confidence uh, following a win. I feel like, oh, I'm on a roll now. So let me try this next thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snowball that. Yeah. 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 You know, when you witness yourself succeeding, that is your that is your hard evidence that you can and that you can do it again. And the more you put yourself in moments when you are uncomfortable, you, you're like, 
okay, I've, I've been here before. I know this is a little weird, you know, and I, I moved through it last time. So I, I actually love that as a tactic. Okay, I did it once. Let's, where's the next one? Let's go. Right. Yeah, I think that's great. Practice doesn't make perfect. It makes improvements. And um, risk appetite matters. Some have more than others for risk. Absolutely. Uh, I think it depends who, to whomever said that, Linda. Um, risk appetite matters, yes. And we all have moments where something is at stake for us and therefore we need to take the risk. That's up to you to decide when that matters for you. All right, so we got two misconceptions down. The third one, which is one of my favorites is you have to be confident before you can take a risk. Meaning I can't do something until I'm absolutely 100% ready, prepared, know all the information. Um, there is a quote that I love if we, from Lemony Snicket, if we wait until we're ready, we'll be waiting for the rest of our lives. Yeah. I could easily wait. I could have easily waited to start my coaching business. I could have easily waited to do many things in my life. And if I did wait until I knew it all, you no, know, because I think, I think that that is similar to saying, I have to lose 15 pounds and get fit before I go to the gym. <laughs> Right. Which doesn't make any sense. Right. It doesn't make any sense at all that to say that I need to know everything and be perfect before I get started in something. How, what are you, how, where's the learning in that, right? There's no opportunity to learn and grow if that's the case. So by doing something before you're ready, that's short circuiting your brain. That's actually taking action before your brain's kind of realized what's going on saying yes to an opportunity that you feel unsure about, that's starting before you're ready. There's gotta be, you gotta stop for a moment and self-evaluate and look at yourself and say, okay, what kinds of things have I handled in my life? What kinds of problems have I solved? Business problems, client problems, personal problems. Am I, am I really, um, do I really need to know all the answers before I can say go? And most mm -hmm. of the time the answer is no. There are a few things in this world we have to be perfect at. Surgeon, pilot, <laughs> those are, those are things where, <laughs> right where we can't have rounding errors right. but in most things um we're, we can go and and try and i know some people say um the term fake it till you make it mm. i actually would push back on that a little bit i don't think we need to fake anything because when we're faking who we are then we are absolutely going to trip over ourselves when we are not being our fullest selves in our imperfection and trying to be something else we think we should be, that is absolutely where we will trip and fall. I have fallen flat on my face when I'm trying to fake it till I make it. So you don't need to fake the perfection, just move forward with it. Start before you're ready. Um, having things licked and understanding and knowing all the possible outcomes, it's not life. You know, I have clients um, who want to make big changes in their lives, whether it's with their business or uh, they want to start new jobs or they want to just do some sort of big transition that they want to take. And they hesitate for a long time mm -hmm. because they're afraid they don't know the answers or they don't, they're, they don't like that. They um, don't know the answers. They want to know the outcomes of everything. Unfortunately, that's not possible. And so we have to begin before we're ready. Um, and so is there anything, Steve, is there anything you've ever started before you were ready that you can recall? Well, you know, I, in, in various different uh, jobs and roles, uh, even in BNI, um, I, it's kind of like sometimes, you know, things change and they ask you, hey, can you move from this department to this department? And this is kind of how I've kind of done pretty much everything in BNI. Yeah. And yeah. I always say yes, even if I don't know if I'm ready for it because mm -hmm. I kind of like that excitement and I am familiar with the culture here. Mm -hmm. And so if I move from uh, managing chapters to launching chapters to, you know, moving into marketing or operations or something like that, um, every time I go into it, I'm like, did I make the right decision? Should I should have stayed in my little comfort zone or should I try something new? And so I just go right into it. Say, all right, let's take this on and see what happens because yeah. this is a comfort zone for me. But if I, let's say, um, working with, uh, like what well, we were talking actually before we started the yeah. the, the webinar today uh, about uh, my freelance uh, work and working in the financial uh, 
area. And that's not something that I'm typically comfortable with, but mm -hmm. saying, you know what, let's just try it and see what happens. And it took me years to get to that point to say, let's yeah. just try it. But trying it and succeeding in it uh, really changes your perspective on things and makes me more comfortable in an area that previously I was uncomfortable in. Yeah. Um, I love try it and see what happens because that makes it an experiment instead yeah. of a uh, life and death, you know, right. high stakes game. Let's right. try it and see what happens. Yeah. Even that sort of downshifts the um, intensity of something, because exactly. when we get scared of something, when, when we're going to take a risk or try something new, we dial up the intensity. We oh. catastrophize what the, <laughs> what the possible bad outcomes might be. Um, you know, all the horrible things in the world we think might happen. Um, we dial that up right. and, and really when, so when we use language, like let's try it and see what happens, we are telling ourselves, we're telling our bodies, we're telling our hearts really, mm -hmm. um, let's dial down the intensity about this. Yeah. It might not be that serious. Yeah. I love that. I'm several, while you were talking several people put into the chat, parenthood, marriage, that's oh, what yeah. I did before I was ready. You're never ready. <laughs> um, yeah. So it sounds like there's some some good, uh, actually mutual cross support happening in the, in the, in the chat as well. Um, paralysis of analysis rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. That's one really fancy, smart way of getting, um, caught in waiting. Like if I just have all the data. Yeah. And so I want to, I want to ask the group, everybody who's here. Okay. How do you know when you're ready? Is there, does you, do you all have a sense? Like, how do you know when you're ready? You don't. Okay. Thank you. This because yeah, my, my thought is, is that it's more of an emotional response when you're ready than, than actually something that's necessarily thought out uh, in, in a way that is probably safer. Yeah. You don't a lot. I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing a lot of you don't, it's just, you just do it. And I agree. Um, I don't know that there's tangible evidence for, okay, now I am officially ready. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So if you don't know when you're ready, then then at any time is a good time to start. And this is particularly hard for me because on, on a disc profile, I am a hard C all the way. Oh, yeah? Very, let's make sure we've got everything right before we put it out there. Yeah. And I've been getting a little bit better with that. It's something I'm working on. Yeah, it's a strength. And we have to be careful when our strengths turn into the turn to the dark side yeah. and Absolutely. work against us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So begin before you're ready. The last one here is that confidence is perfection. That is a big misconception. Mm. Confidence means perf that someone is per is perfect or has done it perfectly. From the outside, when we perceive when we perceive someone as confident, we think it's smooth as silk yeah. that they do it perfectly and they can't be stopped. When in reality, confidence is very very messy. Mm. Um, confidence includes things like trembling, worry on the inside. Pounding hearts, hand sweating, overanalyzing, up at 3 a.m., questioning yourself. Mm. You know, I did um, I did a uh, half-day workshop at Microsoft about a year and a half ago, and there was a lot of pressure put on this work workshop. It was some conflict resolution that we were doing. And um, I'll be honest, I was super nervous. I was prepared. I was, just like you said, pre preparation makes you feel confident. I was prepared, and I still was nervous. I had a pounding heart through the entire five hours. And when I left, I had a pounding headache from the elevated blood pressure. <laughs> I never quite relaxed. And yet on the outside, because I was so rehearsed, it all looked fine and smooth. Got, I got really good you know, feedback from it. And um, the folks you know, get, learned a lot and it was really fun. And it was messy as heck inside. And so confidence can and actually should be messy. If you are neat and tidy all the time, you're not learning anything. You're not pushing yourself. If you're not getting a little gritty and a little messy, um, you're not seeing how far you can go. You're not, you're not learning new things in new ways. The less messy, the, the more you're in the messiness, the better you are at handling it and the less messy it feels. Also, this is where you build resilience. Resilience is a big component of confidence. Knowing that when things don't go your way, you can bounce back. Knowing that when um, you've made the wrong choice, that it's just a way for you to pivot and try again. It's not this catastrophe. 
So when you, again, when you witness yourself doing something, being messy, being uncomfortable, the more confident you are to continue to put yourself out there over and over again. So how does all that sound, Steve? Like those four misconceptions, yeah? Have I covered yeah. them for the most, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's well covered, but uh, you know what, I'm just learning more and more about um, you know, how our brain works with, you know, in certain situations and getting to that point where you say, all right, I understand why I have all these things working against me, but I still have to push through. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you were talking about with the, the headache following your, your presentation, we've all been there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of exhilarating when you're on the other side of it. It's the most exhilarating. Yeah. I mean, you cannot be stopped when you have conquered something you didn't think you could do. Right. So I, I just, I, the, I mean, I have to, I can't ignore this chat. So there's some such good mm -hmm. com comments in here. Um, Tina says confidence is the ability to utilize the audience's skills and knowledge to help enlarge the content of the topic. Yes. And it's also the ability to be present, Tina, to pay attention to the audience and not worry about myself in those moments as well. <laughs> right. Um, people typically respond positively to others who acknowledge vulnerability. Donna, thank you for that. Yes, confidence is messy and confidence is vulnerable. When you put yourself out there, you are making yourself vulnerable. And you know what? People love it. People love it. That's why I think we respond really well to, to um, un underproduced videos and quick one-off. I see these videos that are just kind of filmed on phones, on LinkedIn. Those are way better to me than an intro and a title card and all that fancy production stuff. I, I want some vulnerability. I want some grit. Well, it's um, and, real and it's coming from one person yeah. rather than a team, yeah. Yeah, and then Linda said, owning mistakes helps ground me during the progress of work. It's painful, but it, it's painful, okay, but it helps me build confidence in myself being real and honest. And that's awesome, Linda, and I would even shift the language there one small tweak instead of painful, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Few things can be painful. There are some things that are absolutely painful, but when we're building ourselves up and working and growing, Let's go with uncomfortable and be in that 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 friction of discomfort. Mm. Okay, so now we talked about all those misconceptions, like the thinking part of it, right? So what do you do? <laughs> well, okay, great, so so what does that actually mean? So I want to talk a little bit about you know how we can kind of put this into action. Um, what do we do here? So I have a very unofficial magic formula that I love for confidence. Confidence is your strengths, your skills and time to practice and cultivate. Um, but the two biggest pieces of this formula are taking action and having belief. You must take action. You cannot learn, you cannot grow, you cannot build confidence, you cannot unlock your confidence if you aren't actually doing something. A lot of people love to, I don't know if you've ever said this, but well, I'm really just trying to think about how I can do this. What does that even mean when we say that? I'm trying to think about how. <laughs> Like we're always thinking about our best strategy and our best plan, take action. Just do something is better than doing nothing. And the piece about belief is, and I've seen it a few times in the chat, trust in yourself, um, believing that you will survive it, that you can do it and it's okay if it's not perfect, and that the growth and success that you can create are worth the potential clunkiness or even failure of the experience. And I wanna say that one again, because all of us here have things at stake. We have our businesses at stake. We have our client relationships at stake, our money, our happiness, you know, our families, our well-being. All of that can be at stake at different levels, at different times in our lives. But our growth and our success are worth the clunkiness, the discomfort, and the potential failure of the experience. Because by the way, when I said um, you could wake up tomorrow and feel confident, I didn't promise that it was a one and done. I didn't promise that it was easy. I didn't promise any of that. I promised what that promise was, was about your mindset changing. And that that piece is about your belief. Um, I'm sure you've all heard that. Have you heard the phrase, I'll believe it when I see it, Steve? Yeah, I'll believe it when I, I see it. The, I say it all the time. Right, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> well, I, like, I like to flip that. I'll see it when I believe it. Yeah. When I believe something, it shows up. When I believe something, I can create it. When I believe something, it, it, it is so. And that puts all the power into my hands. That puts all the power into your hands. 
Um, and that's what I mean by confidence as a choice. And that's what I mean you could wake up tomorrow and decide you're confident. I'm going to be confident today. So here's some ways to help challenge your thinking and a tool that I use to help me take some action in this. So first, choose to stop comparing. And when you're in choice, make the choice to stop comparing and instead go for inspiration. If I compared myself to a, an executive coach who'd been coaching for 30 years, I will never measure up. I can't compare to that level of experience yet. And we live in a world where we see very perf we see a lot of perfection out there through social media, through the news, and we're in constant comparison. And then we have peers and we have people in our chapters that are succeeding. Maybe our business is struggling a little bit or we're unsure of what to do and we're comparing. Comparing doesn't help anybody. It is the thief of joy, happiness, lively, aliveness, all of it. Instead, find inspiration. Go find somebody who you see as more, who you perceive as more confident and ask them, how do you do it? What's the experience like? You got any tips for me? Can I hang out with you and learn from them? Because if we're spending time um, looking for ways that we are not enough, we'll find it. I'll find it every time. There's always someone smarter, faster, or better than me. Um, this is a tactical one, witness and track your successes. I don't know about anyone in the audience, maybe you do this, Steve, but I, from time to time, will write down um, what I've achieved, yeah. small and big. Um, sometimes people do this annually when they do goals or they do this from a business perspective. I like to just do this in my journal. I'm a journaler. I write down five or six things I've done in the last couple of months that really I I impressed myself. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and that is my building list of tangible evidence that I am capable. And that reminds me, oh yeah, I am pretty damn confident here because, you know, look at all these things I've been able to do. Right. And by the way, Steve said, oh, I could never do that, which tells me like that's something special. And so witnessing and tracking your successes as a regular practice can really continue to put those bricks in the walls, in the wall of your confidence. Um, identifying and clarifying your fear and then putting it in check. So fear can be this nebulous, just over our feeling that can kind of take over, right? It can just, and you don't even, we don't even know what we're scared of sometimes. We just, no, 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 I can't do that. That's just not. And, and I've been challenged before. My husband loves to challenge me and say, well, what are you actually unsure of? And sometimes I can't even articulate it because there's really not much there for me to actually be scared of. So when we ask ourselves, what am I actually scared of? What does it actually mean? We're then able to put it in check. We're then able to um, right size it and de-intensify it and de-escalate it because most of the time we blow it out of proportion um, and make it bigger than it is. Um, and then the last one here for your mindset is go to your edge. And this one is my favorite, go to your edge. Uh, I like to think about this as pushing ourselves intentionally into a place that is totally uncomfortable in order to see what our edge is. You see, when you push yourself to the, to the brink, you can see where you need to do work. Um, I don't know how many out there lift weights or, you know, go to the gym and, and pump the iron, but I did for a long time. And there's a tactic that a technique that they use, you lift weights to fail. So you literally lift your weights until your muscles give out and you can no longer lift. That tells you how far you can go and how much you can lift, but you won't know that unless you push yourself to the edge. We spend so much time thinking about what our capabilities are. We don't actually know how far we can go until we push ourselves to that edge. And we often surprise ourselves. Um, and how, how do I know I'm at my edge? <laughs> Well, I might be emotionally depleted. I might be, you know, exhausted. I might be exhilarated. Like you said, Steve, like in those moments where you really pushed yourself hard, I might feel really exhilarated and know, okay, that's about as far as I could go. I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm done for now. Yep. But if you don't know, the great news is I have a tool. And Steve said he was very excited about this tool. And so I'm going to explain this to all of you. This is mm -hmm. a great tool to know when you're at your edge. So these are the four zones of doing. We've all heard of our comfort zone. That's the cute little bunny slippers, right? The, the teal, the teal ring. There's a dead zone, the comfort zone, stretch zone, panic zone. I'm gonna start with our comfort zone. The comfort zone gets a bad rap, everybody. Everywhere I turn, I see like, oh, good things don't happen in your comfort zone. You gotta push yourself out of your comfort zone. 
Yes and no. Comfort zone is where we build a lot of our uh, competency, our skill, our um, and our confidence. We have a lot of successes in our comfort in our comfort zone, and you can think about that as kind of your bread and butter, right? It's like what I do every day. Steve, you got some you got some web copy, some campaign copy to write for your clients. Like that's your comfort zone, you know, you know. But but you know you can do it. You know you're good at it. You may need to learn a little sometimes, but you got this, right? That's where the that's where a lot of the money comes from. Um, but there's a point where you start to need to learn more. And so that's where we get into our stretch zone. That's the yellow ring right here. This is when we're not exactly sure how we're going to solve a problem. We don't know what we're going to do for the next move. We need to learn something. We need to accumulate some new skills. We need to talk to people. We need to get uncomfortable. That's our stretch zone. And so our confidence is mainly built between comfort and stretch. Those are the two zones we need to dance between. So I have a sense that all of you um, know when you're in your comfort zone, right? You're like, this is me, I'm in my flow, this is my jam, I got this. And you also know when the stretch zone needs to happen, you can push yourself. So you gotta dance between those two to up the confidence. Now there are two rings here that can absolutely deplete your confidence. The first one is the dead zone. When we spend too much time in our comfort zone, when we get bored, when we are no longer stimulated or excited by what we're doing, it's just all easy, we end up in the dead zone. That's the pink dot in the middle. That's where there's no aliveness, there's no learning, there's no excitement, there's no enthusiasm. And that, and that completely just like sinks your confidence because you're not using it. You're not um, activating on any of your creativity and your natural talent in the dead zone. Sometimes our businesses can go into the dead zone. Sometimes our you know, evening routines can go into the dead zone. You just kind of go and watch the Netflix at night, every night, all the time, because you're just so depleted or tired. That's that's dead zone stuff. Yeah. The other the other one that can that can really just shred our confidence is being in the panic zone. This is the purple ring. The panic zone is when we've pushed ourselves beyond what we're actually capable of, where we've said yes to too much, where we're overwhelmed and we're now spread too thin and nothing can get done and we're not bringing our best selves to any of the work that we're doing to any of our client relationships that's panic and that's where we don't do anything we don't do anything great we're just trying to solve and fix and plug all the holes and not doing a great job i have absolutely been there in my career um steve i don't know if you've ever experienced panic zone before absolutely yeah yeah um so someone in the in the chat said comfort zone is business as usual, B-A-U. And yeah, it can be business as usual. And a lot of good stuff can happen in, in, in the comfort zone. So this is how you know where to how to push yourself to your edge because you are in your comfort, you're doing your thing. Okay, it's time to learn something new. Okay, maybe it might be time for me to push myself a little bit. So you get into your stretch zone. These are your two golden zones, right? If you end up Without any excitement, enthusiasm, you're, there's no aliveness, you're, you might be in your dead zone. You need to get back out of there. And if you're freaking out, you're probably in your panic zone. So you need to get back into the blue and the gold. So that's this tool. How, I hope that that like um, met your expectations, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's interesting to me is I think that people may be in the dead zone when they think they're in the comfort zone. Oh, You yeah. know, like when, like say when people are, you know, uh, if you're like me, a solopreneur, right? It's just you and, and the business and you're doing a lot of work and you're making money and that sounds like it's comfort, but you're not moving the business forward at all. You're not making new connections. You're really just your own employee. Mm -hmm. You're just doing that. And I feel like that's where you're stuck. And oh yeah. You can't move out of it unless you I, do something about it. I love that distinction. That's a great one. The other distinction to be careful of is that sometimes when we're in, we're, we're in our stretch zone, we think we're, it's painful, ah, I can't do this. And we miss, we miss um, perceive it as our panic zone. Right. When really, if we just took a step back and took a breath, actually, I just need to learn some new things here. I'm not totally overwhelmed. I can absolutely do this. So yeah, you can arm, that's where the mindset comes in and how we perceive things, right? So it's up to us to do some personal inventory to check in and see what's really going on, to make sure we know exactly where we are and where we need to go. Um, all right, so I want to just quickly look in the chat. 
Um, so Maria says she loves the graphic. I was in the panic zone this week with the launch. I had to step back, take a breath and think about what would move the needle and matter and move the needle most and matter. Thank you for that. Um, I love that. Sometimes you think you can, you have to do it all when there are absolutely things that can wait. Yes to that too. You do not have to do it all lest you end up in the panic zone. Um, and I think uh, my, Maria's got a lot to say. I love this. I think mindset is huge to avoid in uh, to avoid the panic zone. The mindset is huge to do anything, people. Wow. We are a product of our perceptions of ourselves, what we think of ourselves and what we think of the world around us. And if those perceptions and attitudes aren't working for us, then maybe we need to look at them and try and change them because all we have is control over what who we are and how we respond and how we choose things. So when I said you could wake up tomorrow and be confident, that's a choice. It's not easy. It's not always pretty. It doesn't always feel good. And it's still a choice. All right. All right. So I'm going to leave some time for questions because I think we, we do have some, but I want everyone to put into the chat. Okay, let's make a commitment here together. All right. We're going to be, we're pink to swearing together. One way you're going to choose confidence in this coming week. One way, let me scroll down, here we go. Taking action, okay, journal my achievements. Yes, learning more, okay, not let fear stop me. Great, tracking my wins, I love it, Steve. Yep, planning, taking action, staying out of my head. <laughs> Finish my newsletter, oh my goodness, they're, they're coming in fast. There we go. Um, track my wins, speak up more, track victories, journaling, set goals, positive affirmations, getting my CD recording back on track. Okay, Lisa, good luck with that. Doing one thing that scares me. Thank you. I, is it, I don't know if it's Latha or Latha, but thank you for that. Okay, everybody. Making a phone call, setting goals. This is great. All right. That's what I got for you. Hopefully, um, and I and just leave you with my contact information. I'm open to one-to-ones, everybody. Hit me up, please. I'm with um, Eastside Connection. It's over at boldnessablaze.com or check me out at boldnessablazecoaching.com. All right. All right, that's what I got. So, do we have some questions? I'm going to stop my I'm going to stop my share. Okay. Let me just come back to you. Okay. All right. So, Joe is asking: Is there a difference between courage and confidence? It sounds like you're describing courage. Just curious. I love that um, courage. So, I think that they blend, and I think it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> and I say that because the result is probably going to be the same. I think you could absolutely define courage as the the taking action and doing it anyway, mm -hmm. and the result of it being the feeling of confidence. So that's great. Yeah, I think I think yes, and they go together. And who cares? Because it all works, right? It's all <laughs> it's all getting you where you want to go. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Let's go to Nick here, who says confidence can be messy. What tips do you give businesses for training and developing confidence in its members? Well, I think the first thing you need to do is make the place, your environment, a safe place to make mistakes and learn. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that is, um, we need to make mistakes in order to build confidence. That's just a part of life, right? But there are a lot of work environments that, that where employees don't feel like it's okay to mess up right. or even ask questions and not know. And so making that a safe space for them to be able to come to you and say, I got this question. I just, I really don't know how to work this out or, okay, listen, I made this mistake, but here's how I think I can solve it. If it's safe for them to do that and to, and to um, have the opportunity to grow and they're not afraid to make mistakes or be imperfect, that's probably a foundational way to help train employees is uh, let them know and reinforce like, we learn here, we learn together, we learn individually. And if you need support, we do this for each other. So that's that's one great way to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ivan asks, how do you handle putting these concepts into action? Then you fall completely on your face. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes we need to fall completely on our face. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, confidence is imperfect. And being confident does not equal good results all the time. That's not the promise here. Confidence doesn't mean you're going to do it right every time or the way it needed to be done or the, the way with the best results. That's not what the promise is here. Confidence is about going and doing and taking action and knowing that you have the 
the right to want to try things and the capacity and capability like anybody to build your business, to go and walk up to somebody and say hello for the first time, whatever it is that's in front of you. Um, get Disconnecting the belief that if you are confident, therefore the results have to be good. I think that's your first step. Disconnect those. Yeah. When we are attached to results, that's another way we just stop ourselves from doing things. It's like, well, it's not going to be perfect, so I can't do it. Yeah, it seems like the confidence is what brings you to the opportunity. And then yeah. what happens after that is, you know, whatever happens. Whatever happens, but I'll guarantee you it's going to be learning. Right. Yeah. All right. Ivan uh, says, uh, oh, this is Ivan again. Uh, is it normal to feel paralyzed when a stressful situation arises and how do you break through? I think everything is normal in our lives, to be honest. I don't think there's anything as abnormal, but I do think it's worth questioning and wondering why you're so paralyzed. And that's where that one tip of um, clarifying and ident identifying and clarifying your fear could come in to really in handy. Uh -huh. If you can give yourself a moment to pause and notice, okay, I feel absolutely paralyzed right now. What is going on with me? What am I actually afraid of? I'm afraid of losing a million dollars, or I'm afraid that this company won't hire me or whatever. I'm making those scenarios up, but asking ourselves, what am I actually afraid of? Why am I afraid of it? And how real is this actually, how likely is this actually going to come to pass? Because when we're par feeling paralyzed, is it's, ter it's, ter it's a terrible feeling, right? It feels like, it's like we feel like we're a victim of something. We can't move. We can't, we can't take action for ourselves. So it's important to take a step back emotionally and mentally and just say, what, what is it that's actually going on for me right now? Why do I feel this way? Yeah. If we don't process our emotions, they will just build up and build up and build up. We got to give them their due. We got to acknowledge them and, and give ourselves the kindness to go, okay, what am I so scared of right now? Or have a conversation with someone that you trust, you know, I'm really scared right now. I don't know what's going on. You got, you got to process the emotion in order to move through it. All right. So we're kind of hitting a nerve here. Because oh, okay. The next few questions are kind of in that same vein. This one says, uh, I understand the idea of paralysis by analysis and moving forward with action. But I also think that sometimes the action is to plan because sometimes people don't plan at all. And that's a mistake as well. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing, I want to be clear. Nothing I've said today is all or nothing. No. It's not do this only and always and never do this. Planning is very Yes, you absolutely have to, you have to plan your business. You got to plan your strategies. You got to plan, um, you got to plan your steps for some things big and small. And there is a point where the strength of planning tips over into the shadow of analysis paralysis, right? Every good action, every strength has a light side and a shadow side. Mm -hmm. And every one of them can flip to the shadow side. So if you have spent a month in planning for something that really could have taken a week, or a couple of days, you got to stop and ask yourself, what am I like over planning for? Plans are great. Over planning, not great. Hopefully that, hopefully that's mm -hmm. the distinction mm -hmm. there. All right. And Don just throws it out on the table. How do you get out of the dead zone? How do you get out of the dead zone? We well, got to recognize you're in the dead zone. You got to have the courage to realize you're in the dead zone. And then you got to ask yourself like, what am, where, what would make me feel more enthusiastic, excited? What, what do I want to learn right now? And what am I avoiding right now? Because sometimes the dead zone is about avoiding things. Sometimes we go into that tiny little place because we're avoiding something bigger. We're avoiding something that might be more challenging. So asking yourself, what do I need right now? How, how can I infuse what I'm, my life, my work, my business with more excitement, more something I love? What, what am I missing that I love doing? That's the dead zone is missing a lot of love, by the way. There's not a lot of love going on in there. Um, so asking that and then asking yourself, what am I avoiding? And answer truthfully, because if you don't answer truthfully, you just stay in there's no point in just staying in the same place. All right. All right. So we have two uh, two sides of the coin here. Okay. Adrian says, how do we rein in overconfidence? And John mm. says, if you've lost your confidence, what's the best way to get it back? So how do we rein in overconfidence? Well, I'll tell you what, one way to do that that happens. And by the way, 
actually, I have two, I have two thoughts on this because that's, that's, oh. that's a great question. So one way you're going to get reined in is you're going to fall on your face <laughs> or someone's going to put you in check <laughs> and you're going to realize, oh, I was a little Nothing. overconfident here. But, but don't I, you think that sometimes overconfidence happens because you're too deep into your comfort zone? Yes. Yes. And then you skip over things and then you move too fast. And then, and then you realize you've made some mistakes and then the results that you produce are not the ones that you wanted. And then you got to take a step back and go, oh, wait, I think I, I think I was a little overconfident in this one. You have to, the results are often a good way to see that you have been over or underconfident um, uh, and reining it in. Well, that's up to you. There's no magic trick to that, right? This is, this is everybody, what we're talking about right now is self-awareness. That's the crux of all of this is self-awareness and us being aware of who we are as close to the moment as possible. And so if you felt you were super confident in something, you went and did it and it didn't turn out at all the way you thought, you thought it was going to be great. And it was going to be obvious because that conversation with that client was going to be amazing. I know everything about this. And they were just flat with you and it just didn't work out. Then you got to do a self-check and say, okay, where did I miss the mark? What have I missed here? Where did I skip some steps? So that's the reigning in the overconfidence. And then what was the question about? Oh, yeah. So if we've lost your confidence, what is the best way to get it back? Um, the best way to get it back is always by taking action. The best way to get it back is to look at what, what was the situation that caused you to lose your confidence and, and what happened to you and what, what are you actually telling yourself about yourself in relation to that and interrogating that story. Some of this is about interrogating our stories about ourselves. Mm. And so, um, when we interrogate our stories, like, why am I here? How did I get thrown back on my heels? Um, and then what are the small, I like this idea, the smallest, biggest step you can take. What is the smallest, biggest step that you can take that will make an impact that will help start to add the bricks back to your confidence wall? Mm. Um, and also be kind to yourself. If you went through something that knocked you on your heels and, you know, threw you back a little bit, be kind to yourself. The confidence is still there. You just have to reconnect with it. Somebody did something, something happened that caused you to get disconnected from your own capability. Mm -hmm. And you just have to, you have to reconnect it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Melinda says, uh, oh, we may need more information here. What is a realistic planning time frame in general, days or weeks? I'm not sure exactly what she's alluding to. I don't know for what. I would need to know for what. And even that, I'm not sure I would have an idea. But if we knew for what, maybe I could offer something. All right. Um, how about this one? You know, I, I'm thinking about the past two and a half years of everything that people have been through. And then I see something from this uh, person who wrote a long series of setbacks, then overwhelmed, then dead zone. Now not wanting to give up, but I'm so tired. Mm. I think it ties into the last question, I think, about losing your confidence. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, a lot of us have been through more than we realized in the past few years. Yeah. Yeah, we have. I mean, you're so, yes, you're so tired. You're drained. You're emotionally, maybe emotionally depleted. Um, that's why the smallest, biggest step is your best bet. What is one small thing? I don't have to boil the ocean. I don't have to do everything to be confident and be a success in my life. Sometimes success looks like achieving one small thing. Okay. And so Melinda jumps back in uh, about her time frame. She is a procrastinator. Ah, uh, so she's, I mean, I don't know if there is a, I think it's different for everybody, isn't it? On, on getting out of your comfort zone and, and trying something new and, yeah. or at least just staying on track to where you said you would be. Yeah, it's, 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 it is different for everyone. If you're a procrastinator, by the way, I don't actually think procrastination is a terrible thing all the time. I think that um, sometimes when we wait on things, the things go away or they resolve themselves. So it's not always a bad thing to procrastinate people. That's the seeds <laughs> of us say. <laughs> um, as, as somebody who is a, usually a pretty quick actor, sometimes I move too quick and I could take a little more time. But the procrastination, I believe, is there's some level of avoiding something in procrastinating, avoiding, you know, maybe what, what they're hoping might not be, what they're concerned might be a bad result, or maybe they don't have the, you don't have the skills or knowledge to do something right away. So you have to go learn it. And that can feel a little intimidating. There's a lot of reasons we can procrastinate. Don't be so hard on yourself about it and get real with what it's about. Like, what are you afraid of? What are you avoiding? 
Right. All right, we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, Maria says, uh, how can you get better at receiving feedback? Like if we do a new thing and bungee jump, how do you remain open to feedback so you can grow, especially if you're a recovering people pleaser? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people pleasers here. I've definitely experienced mm -hmm. that. Um, so feedback, I like to think of, feed first, you got to take feedback from someone you respect and trust. Because if someone's not, I think Brene Brown says, if you're not in the arena out there fighting with me, I don't want to hear your feedback, right? So that's one thing. Yeah, it's got to come from a place that you trust and that you acknowledge. But also feedback is something you can choose to take and apply or not. Just because someone says it doesn't mean it's right. And it's up to us to acknowledge and evaluate, okay, I can take this piece it's really hard for me to take. I didn't like hearing about that, but I think that this is actually inaccurate and I, I don't agree with that. And that's not, um, that's not an arrogance thing or that's, that's not a, you know, that's a, that's a real life evaluation. You can't take everybody's comments and opinions, uh -huh. but if it's coming from someone you trust and who you know is in support of you and a big fan and wants to see you succeed, that, that makes it much easier to accept the feedback. And also we got to get a little tougher with ourselves. Like, okay, one piece of bad feedback does not make a failure. You know, bad feedback and failure do not, they're not the same. Cut the cord. Right. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. That helps. Well, all right. That was a lot of questions. Oh, I think there's one more in Q&A. Let's see what's here. Oh, there's a lot. So we're going to run out of time. Okay. Uh, but we have a lot of thank yous in here. And I uh, that. there's no actual questions, which is good. Um, so Wow. All right. I took a bunch of notes. I learned a lot today. Great. And I know a lot of people in the chat certainly have as well, which is fantastic. So, Zoe, so any glad. final words for us or just to, to sign off? Just go do the thing. That's my final mm. articulate. Just go do the thing. What's the thing? Just go do it. Something, oh, anything. Sounds good. And watch yourself succeed because yeah. you absolutely will. You cannot make a mistake. You just cannot, unless you're a pilot or a surgeon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful on those things. Uh, all right. So um, we have some people asking about uh, when they're going to be able to watch this replay. I'm going to upload it this afternoon. As soon as it finishes doing its thing on Zoom, I'll put it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, just Google BNI Team USA YouTube and you'll find it. And uh, Zobik, thanks for being on. I, Thank another, you. Another really great talk. Uh, we love you. having you on and certainly want to have you back again. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for being so great. Such great participants. Thank you, Steve. Have a great weekend, everyone. We are about to jump into our book discussion. Uh, okay. So I put the link on if anyone wants to do the, the, the book discussion. You don't have to have read this book. We're doing the 10 Time Rules by Grant Cardone. And I have some opinions on this book. I was <laughs> not happy with this guy. But maybe that's just me. If you want to join hit that, but uh, give yourselves a CEU. There is no webinar this next week because of the 4th of July long holiday, uh, but we will see you in two weeks. So take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.